Are you looking to purchase your first property or an additional property to your investment portfolio? You already have your credit score up, your desired neighborhood selected, and finally found the perfect property on Redfin. Now you are more than excited because your dream will soon become a reality. But wait, something is missing. Hello, business people. It's Nia here. Some people are fearing for the housing crash this year, or the next two years, or the next three years. But anyway, the topic of today is what our mortgage lenders are not telling us and how we can save thousands of dollars to protect us in the face of a housing crash. Stay tuned at the end of this bomb ass intro. mortgage lender shares all the tricks, secrets, and tips to keeping money in your pocket. But I want all my business people to be successful. So I will be addressing what mortgage lenders do not share with everyone. Starting with number one, getting rid of PMI or MIP. MIP stands for Mortgage Insurance Premium, which is associated with the FHA loan and can only be removed unless you refinance to a conventional loan or put down a 10% down payment and wait for the 11th year of the loan term when MIP automatically falls off. PMI is private mortgage insurance, which is like MIP in that it's a monthly fee added on to your home ownership expenses when you get a conventional loan, and this can be removed. The purpose of PMI or MIP is to protect your mortgage lender just in case you default on your loan. and your home value is not enough to repay the debt. The average cost of PMI ranges from 0.5% to 2% of the original loan amount per year. For example, if I have a $500,000 mortgage loan, my PMI can be $2,500 or $10,000 a year. In this example, if I get rid of PMI, I will be allocating between $2,500 to $10,000 a year towards cryptocurrency, bonds, stocks, or simply investing into a new property or a saving. Judging. So how do we get rid of this damn PMI? Well, the Federal Homeowners Protection Act, or HPA, Lays out the laws for how you can get rid of PMI by either A, waiting for it to automatically fall off, or B, requesting for cancellation of PMI. I will speak of four traditional ways you can get rid of PMI, as well as one unique way that mortgage lenders are not sharing. One, request PMI cancellation once you've paid off 20% of your loan's principal balance. Your request must be in writing, you must have good payment history, and no junior liens on your home. Two, wait for your PMI to automatically fall off once your mortgage balance reaches 78% of the original purchase price. For example, let's say I bought a home for $100,000 and my current mortgage balance is $78,000. That gives me a loan to value ratio of 78%. Three, pay 20% down payment to build 20% equity into your home from the start. Four, refinance into a special loan program with no PMI, such as a piggyback mortgage loan program. Finally, let's talk about what mortgage lenders don't want us to know about avoiding PMI and saving half of the cost in the long run. The secret is single premium. Yes, single premium. You are basically paying the PMI upfront as a lump sum to buy it out rather than paying it monthly through the life of the term. 
For example, let's say I purchased a home for $500,000 and put down a 5% down payment. That would mean my loan amount would be $475,000, which also means I have to wait until my mortgage balance reaches $390,000 for my PMI to fall off. Traditionally, it can take up to six to nine years for your PMI to fall off. This traditional route could cost me about $60,000 in PMI payments for six to nine years. But the non-traditional PMI or a single premium will only cost me 2% of the loan value. An example I given, 2% of the loan value is $9,500. Hence, I will be saving about $50,000 in PMI costs. But it is very important for you all to know, this little secret of single premium is not for everyone. Some people might want to sell their home within a year, two years, or three years. Therefore, there is no reason to put an upfront payment for your PMI. You're better off using that money towards buying a new home or just saving up. Stop the video! And kindly tap the like and subscription button. Your likes and subscriptions are appreciated. Number two, FHA limits. FHA loan lending limits are annually updated to reflect increases in housing prices. These limits depend on state or area code, as well as the type of home, such as a multifamily versus a single family. However, in high cost areas like San Francisco, Los Angeles, or New York, that $1.8 million limit for a fourplex is still not enough. What? What the fuck? So how do we deal with this, everyone? We get a near-miss jumbo loan. Yes, a near-miss jumbo loan. Many home buyers do not know that you do not need to put down a 20% down payment to get a jumbo loan. Rather, you can put down a 5% down payment. I've even heard of the new 3.5% down payment jumbo loan that just came onto the market. Requirements for these near miss jumbo loans vary across state, but typically a 680 credit score or more is needed to qualify. And only a single family, town home, or a condo is eligible. Number three, FHA 203K mortgage loans. This allows home buyers to gain a loan for both purchasing and rehabbing or renovating a home, all through one single mortgage. This is a sneaky way to purchase a rundown multifamily or a single family home that falls within the FHA mortgage limits that I spoke about before, and beautifying and rehabbing it. One person's trash is another person's treasure. These three pieces of information will help protect you in the face of a potential housing market crash because your financial buying power will improve in terms of how much house you can afford and your mortgage package will improve in terms of you securing a lower monthly payment.